Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tanya Jean Moore. This is the 25th anniversary special edition of the Sedona International Film Festival. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Digitech, Black Magic Design, and the beautiful Sedona Rouge for sponsoring our media room this year. And we have something really special in store. I'm going to let Josh take it away. Thanks, Tanya. Mm -hmm. All right. Welcome, everyone, and welcome to this esteemed panel of grounding and earthing pioneers. <laughs> I'm just going to take a moment to explain what we're doing here today. This is the cast, although this is a documentary, so cast is a different kind of word. This is the cast of a movie called Down to Earth, which explores the science behind grounding. Grounding being this incredible technology called putting your feet on the ground. <laughs> that was pioneered and really discovered by Clint Ober here in the middle. So I'm going to go through and introduce everybody, and then we're going to talk about the incredible world behind Down to Earth. All right, my name is Josh Tickell. I'm one of the co-directors of the film. This is? I'm Rebecca Tickell. I'm also one of the co-directors of the film. I'm Clint. Author of this book. Author of the Earthing book. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and Grounding Pioneer. Yes. Grounding Pioneer. Yes. There you go. I'm Bobby Williams. I also like to work barefoot as often as I possibly can. <laughs> I'm Marielle Hemingway, and I am also very into being grounded. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we're going to start with you, Rebecca, and your personal story with grounding. Part of why we made the movie is because of what happened with our family. And you'll notice today we're all not wearing something, <laughs> not wearing shoes. Are my feet dirty? We're going to explain <laughs> why, and you're going to learn a lot more today, but you're also going to learn a lot more in the documentary Down to Earth. Rebecca, why don't you start by, by telling everybody why we got interested in Clint Ober's work, yes. and what happened to our family, and then what happened to you personally, and then we'll actually hear from Clint himself. Yeah. Yeah. So in 2012, we were here at the Sedona Film Festival with a film called The Big Fix, which was about the BP oil spill. And in that film, we show that I actually got sick during the oil spill from exposure to oil and dispersant. I had strange symptoms like rashes, I had blood in my urine, and some other things, but the most disturbing thing was that doctors told me I shouldn't or possibly couldn't have children. And this was right after we had just gotten married in 2010, and that was very um, disturbing. And so we went on a healing journey and sure enough, I did have a miscarriage. And then when I got pregnant with our daughter, she had a birth defect. And they told me that we had a one in three chance that she wasn't going to make it or that she would be severely malformed. So fortunately, miraculously, she was born healthy. And um, shortly after, we noticed that she was getting unusually sick a lot. And for a couple of years, the first two years, I would say every other month or so, she would get so sick that we would end up in the hospital, where she was coughing so hard that her throat would get so inflamed that she couldn't breathe. And so we would race to the emergency room and they would use their allopathic medicine to help her stabilize. So that just wasn't working for us as a family. I mean, obviously as a mother, I wanted my daughter to be healthy and we were both very concerned and we weren't sure what to do and so we started to look at all different types of alternative options. And right at that time, a friend introduced us to Clint. And Clint walked through our door and we thought, huh, this seems a little too good to be true because what he told us was that by putting our feet and connecting to the earth that we could heal our bodies and it would start to reverse inflammation. And that was exactly the issue my daughter was having. And so, skeptically, we tried it, and we started grounding our daughter. And Not grounding in that she had been bad, <laughs> and she had to do like a timeout, but grounding in that she was connected to the earth yes. for, you know, a significant portion of each day, barefoot or playing mm -hmm. on the ground, that kind of ground. Yeah. Yeah. And we also had her sleeping on grounding mm -hmm. sheets, so when she was sleeping at night, when she would start coughing and the inflammation, instead of getting that inflammation that would land us in the hospital, she started sleeping through the night. And so it's been over a year since we started this practice, and we have taken her to the hospital exactly zero times. 
And that for us was totally miraculous. And my daughter, when I asked her, Athena, you know, what happened? She says, Mama Earth healed me. Huh. But the side effect of She's all of this. She's four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> the side effect of all of this that we weren't expecting was um, one of my doctors said, well, you should do that. You should do that, too, because I told him what we were doing, and I was asking him about it. He said, you should try that. You should get your whole body naked and put it on the ground. <laughs> and I was a little bit, you know, apprehensive. I thought that <laughs> seemed a bit, you know, woo-woo. But I was like, okay. And so I did it. And I'd say within 24 hours, I had a surge in my libido, which was <laughs> outrageous and lasted. I mean, it's still going. And... Um, <laughs> Good for Josh. As the moderator, but yeah. also as a husband. Things are working out well for you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Grounding has worked out for us. <laughs> but I had also been really sick. And I wasn't thinking about myself, and I wasn't thinking about my health. I was just focused on my daughter. And I stopped getting sick. In fact, I haven't been sick at all in a year. I haven't even had a cold in a year, and that was unheard of for me. But the craziest thing that happened was I stopped having this urge to constantly put food in my mouth. And I um, have struggled with depression and my weight since I was a teenage girl. And in a year, I've lost 100 pounds. And it was, people see me and they don't recognize me. And it's because my hormones balanced, my body regulated, and I became conscious of what I was eating. I suddenly didn't crave those things anymore. I suddenly just felt connected to my body. And so I'm here to say, as a filmmaker who went to find something to help my daughter who had been suffering, that not only did I find something that worked for her, but it worked for me. And I've talked to scientists and doctors as a result of Clint introducing to us, and the 21 peer-reviewed studies all say scientifically 100% that when we're connected to the earth, our body cannot have inflammation, and it will start to heal. And that was my experience with it. Wow. OK, well, thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so listen, if you're, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you're watching it live, or you're watching it the next day, or you're watching it anytime, share this with your friends, your family, your community, people in your life who may be suffering from some inflammation-related problem might have a tremendous amount to benefit from grounding. There's also the website down to earth documentary or earthingmovie.com earthingmovie.com where you can find more information, read some of these incredible studies. And if you get onto the Facebook page, Earthing Movie, Facebook Earthing Movie, the testimonies are incredible. This is not a placebo. This is real science. And I want to hear from Clint. I, wanna, I want you to tell us something. Jordan, can I just uh, ask you to do something? Can you just put a uh, press record on that little audio recorder for me? So um, Clint, I want to I hear, we're here in Sedona at the Sedona Film Festival. And it's full circle for you. Yes. This is kind of where it all started. Tell us about the discovery, because I, you know, people know about grounding. You didn't really discover grounding, but you did discover the relationship right. of grounding to the human body. Yes. And that's a significant discovery. Tell us about that discovery, and how did that lead you here 20 years later? Okay. <coughs> um, about 22 years ago, I found myself in Sedona, lived over off a sunset. And I spent about a year and a half working with the galleries, doing lighting and doing special events. But I was really retired at that time. I was 54 years old. And uh, as time went on, uh, or one day I was sitting outdoors on one of the benches over where the tour buses stopped after I had fixed some electrical stuff uh, that was related to static electricity. And I went outdoors, I sat down on the bus, and a tour bus pulled up in a as all the people got off, they looked like they had just been to one of the um, the outlet stores and they had the white Nike uh, tennis shoes on sale. And I was just sitting there looking at it and I thought, hmm, I wonder if there's a problem here because humans used to be grounded. When I was a child, we were always grounded. We were always barefoot. We were always in contact with the earth. And the reason I had spent 30 years in the communications industry where everything had to be grounded, everything uh, you know, it's a whole industry. And so I knew a lot about grounding, and I knew that the earth was electrical, and you ground everything to reduce and prevent charge. So 
<clears throat> but that's the that's where it all started and it was kind of interesting so I went home that night and uh, went to the hardware store up the street here and bought some metal duct tape and laid it on my bed and connected it to a wire and connected it to the earth and laid down on it took a voltmeter and measured it to make sure I was grounded and that night <clears throat> I fell asleep like normally I would have to take Advil to go to sleep because I had so much pain in my body I was a cowboy I had been skiing injury tennis industry you name it I had I remember one time in Sedona going over in the backyard and looking up to God and saying, God, why did you make my body with so much pain in it? Mm. <laughs> and mm. then this started to unfold. But anyhow, um, I just intuitively asked if there was a, a consequence to us no longer being naturally grounded. I didn't know. But in the process of grounding myself, I had a lot of arthritic type pain and a lot of just pain. Um, and, uh, and all of a sudden, I started sleeping better, and then I grounded one of my friends here in Sedona that had a lot of arthritis, and um, another fellow that was butting into the conversation one day. <laughs> so just to, uh, you know, I said, you got to try this, you know, because in Sedona you don't have a whole lot to do sometimes, so, except entertain yourself with your friends. And um, <clears throat> so anyhow, so I went over and, and uh, the same thing, I uh, grounded this individual and another individual. And both of them had significant improvement in sleep. And that's what we thought it was, is more to do with sleep. But then one of them said, you know, my, do you think this could have anything to do with arthritis? I says, no, I don't know. I didn't know at the time. And his arthritis had started to come down. So <clears throat> that set me on an odyssey. I went down to uh, the university in, in uh, Tucson and spent some time down there with uh, a few people trying to find the relationship between grounding and pain, but nobody in the medical world understood anything about grounding. It was a foreign subject. And everything in the medical industry, to me, was a foreign subject. But uh, as time went on, I ended up having to go to um, UCLA to try to get engage them in the concept. They kind of laughed me off campus. Then I ended up <laughs> in Ventura and uh, pulled together a couple of students and uh, a nurse up there, and we did a study of about 60 people. 30 placebo and 30 control, I mean, uh, contr yeah, subjects. And so it, it just took on a life of its own. And then I figured I'd be out in California for six, eight months and I'd come back home. But instead, it's been 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been back on a couple of times uh, occasions with, uh, yeah. at the uh, Chopra event and so on. But in, anyhow, so it's uh, just a whole long story. It all started here in Sedona, so this is really a homecoming for me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of my friends that I left 20 years ago, I can't find them. <laughs> Everybody knows Sedona. There's a pretty good turnover. But a lot of them were elderly at the time. I'm 74 now, so um, it's uh, interesting. So, so, so can I ask you a couple of clarification yes. questions? Uh -huh. um, first, jumping forward to today. You, you did that first study with 30 people who were part of the control or placebo right. group and then 30 people who were actually experienced grounding. Right. Forward to today, how many peer-reviewed studies approximately are there out there? I think there's a total of 24 peer-reviewed published studies and there's two left remaining to be published that are going through the processes. So 24 peer-reviewed studies and these are studies that are peer-reviewed in medical journals, yes, science journals, yeah. uh, respected publications both in America and overseas. Yes, for 20 years. And you said something that folks at home may have missed, but your first experiment, you put duct tape, a metal duct tape on yourself. You didn't attach yourself to a battery. You attached yourself to the ground. Yeah, I, I, I what is the ground? Just so people know at home, what okay. does that mean? You attach yourself to the ground. Okay, ground. The earth itself has a an electrical surface charge and it's what they call negative, meaning that there's an abundance of free electrons that are able to move and reduce charge. So everything in our electrical world, in order to maintain electrical stability, the Earth is the constant. So everything is measured against the, Earth, the Earth's electrical surface potential. So <clears throat> when you stand barefoot on the Earth, I mean the Earth is slightly negative, so when you stand barefoot on the Earth, then your whole body becomes slightly negatively charged. You can't have inflammation in a negatively charged object. And so that was the uh, catalyst that said. Uh, and most of the time I thought I was wrong because I'm just a cowboy from Montana. I mean, how could <laughs> <laughs> you? Know, I, and I was working with all of these educational, I mean, our um, medical scientists and so on. 
uh, nobody had tied this, made this connection. Right, but, but your background is electrical. Oh, yes, and, yes. And you were instrumental in the invention of the cable modem, among yes. other things. Yeah, exactly. so, so you didn't come at this like with no knowledge. You had no. a background of electrical knowledge. No, I had a 30-year uh, background in the cable television industry and the communications industry, microwave and so on, where we were transmitting signals, and you have to have everything grounded, shielded, to protect it from lightning and to protect the homes from lightning. I mean, it's a, it's a major uh, industry. Um, today we see it in the clean rooms, in the uh, surgical centers, in mission control centers, mm -hmm. uh, critical con mission critical centers like air, tra <coughs> air traffic control, anything uh, where it, you have to be up and there can't be any static electricity or there can't be any charge potentials. So <coughs> yeah, I'd say it's even 30 years ago, uh, well, it, in 1950s is when they started to recognize that static electricity was problematic. When they first started doing open heart surgery, they're, they're, most of the early patients died from static shocks. They, didn't, they couldn't even see them, they were invisible. Mm -hmm. But when you open up the body, then static can get in and create a, an electrical event, a heart event. And so that's why everything is grounding is a, is a huge industry, but it is not common knowledge to, to the public yet. Right. So, okay. so this is, you know, folks at home, if you're watching this, this is breakthrough information. This is more or less the first time this has been put into a movie. We did a little short film that went on right. Facebook. It's been seen by tens of millions of people. But this is really the big aha. So share this. If you're watching this, share this with your friends. Just put their name in the comments so it tags them so that they can see that they've been tagged so that they can watch this. This is amazing information. We're going to hear from two people next. What's wrong with information? Should we ask Clint? You know, let's come back to that. Okay. Yeah, because we're on a tight okay. time frame. But yes, yeah. absolutely. So we're going to hear from two people who ground as part of their lifestyle. And I want to hear from Bobby Williams first. Bobby, you've been a stuntman, you've been an actor, you've done many things. But one of the things that I'm most excited that you are today is an advocate for health. And you've co-written a book with Marielle. You've done a lot of deep study in terms of what it takes to sustain human health without medical intervention. Mm -hmm. Because anybody in America knows we have an intervention-based medical industry not a prevention-based industry. So tell us about health. What do you do for your health? What does it mean to be sustainable, healthy, and how does that relate to grounding and your feet? <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting. It's something I've, uh, I've been in, in, involved in, in health and wellness since I hit the ground running, let's say. I come from a very athletic family. My grandfather was a... Uh, a professional fighter and wrestler and football player. I have pictures of him with Joe Lewis and Billy Kahn back in the day. And um, it was just in the family instilled in us to take care of ourselves. We're self-healing, self-sufficient, self-sustaining, provided the right information, the right environment. Um, what better environment than to be outdoors, right? Your mom said when you were a kid, go outside and play, go get some fresh air. All of these things are the reasons why we are the way we are if we take care of ourselves and we go to those doctors. Our doctors, Mariel and I, are Dr. Sun, Dr. Air, Dr. Water, Dr. Nutrition, Dr. Exercise, and Dr. Rest. They're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they're free. <laughs> if you see these guys, you don't have to go to the allopathic guys, right? We believe that we have a great emergency medical care here, um, and allopathic and Western medicine is fantastic for those, those things, you know, the emergencies. But preventative and actual, you know, healthcare is self-care. You know, everybody's like, where's my health care? Where's my health care? Well, what did you do for yourself today? How are you taking care of yourself? If you don't do that, well, you know, you have entitlement issues, thinking some guy in a white coat is going to fix you by giving you a pill. That's not the answer. <laughs> so one of the big things that we do, Marilyn and I do, nearly every single day, and we're blessed to be able to do this, is we walk barefoot. You know, we do about 90 minutes in the mountains every day. We did it this morning. We walked over at, at Enchantment, and you know, broke off onto a deer trail and went way up into these corridors and we were following like deer stuff and, and but barefoot, you know, connecting, connecting. And interesting story on the, on the stunt stuff, I made a mistake about uh, five months ago. I jumped off a climbing wall from 30 feet to the cement. Thinking that I was tied in, I was not tied in. And uh, moving around too fast and trying to get as many climbs as, that I, as I could, you know, on a self belay before the place closed. And, 
you know, I, I had clipped in a bunch of ropes for them to help clean up and I took off and went to the top and I got up top and I said, ah, oh, that rope's in my way. I'm gonna climb over the left and jump. And I jumped and I just kept falling. So this foot really got pounded. I tore the ligaments on every side, the Achilles, have a hairline fracture in the calcaneus back here and went to, well, I wouldn't go to the doctor as usual, I, I, like I avoided. <laughs> Meryl said, you have to go, the foot stain's swollen, it's not changed, and after about 10 days, I went to the veterinarian, he's like, put your paws <laughs> on the table, and, and he x-rays my feet, and he said, your bones are identical. He said, there might be a hairline fracture when he pulled it up and made it as big as he could on the inside of the calcaneus, and he goes, that's the roughest bone in the body to break. And so, um, uh, I went to a couple of orthopedics and got this, you know, sought after some medical help and what, what I could do. And they said, this is the bone that we haven't figured out yet. And long story short, I talked to an orthopedic uh, of my family back east uh, that I haven't seen in 25 years. And he said, are you still as healthy as you were when you were a kid? He's like, I have a problem with one thing. And I was like, what's that? He said, it says you're 56 here. And I'm like, ah, I'm not 56. I'm not going to be 56 for another 100 years. He said, you're still eating raw meat and doing all the crazy stuff? Yeah, I'm doing all that. He's like, okay. He's like, don't get a cast. Keep your foot up 12 weeks. Elevate it. Never stop moving the ankle. Do not touch that heel to the ground. You should not operate on it. I know they want to put screws in and a plate and this and that. And I didn't do any of those things. And he said, it's going to be 18 months. It's been five. You know, and I attribute quite a bit of it to the barefoot walking. I went to our... Um, physical therapist last week, the week before, the week before, every week he said, how is your foot healing so fast? How is your foot healing so fast? I'm, a, I'm like, well, Mary and I walk barefoot every day in the mountains, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it hurts when I'm in a shoe and it feels great when I'm barefoot. So, you know, it's been in the upper 30s, believe it or not, in, in, in Malibu the last couple of months. And Marilyn and I have been walking and even the cold feels fantastic, right? The, the hot foot getting the cold ground. And it's just profound, but you know, I've been doing this for about 30 years. There's a book called Born to Run. It's about the Tara Mahara who run barefoot for like 100 miles. And um, there's something to it, you know, that's all I kept thinking. There's gotta be something to this barefoot. I, I hike in the Sierras barefoot. I walk through Death Valley barefoot, you know, and the more barefoot I am, the happier and healthier I become. And I believe we're supposed to live a whole hell of a lot longer than 75 years. I mean, you know, if I'm coming up on 60 and I still am like this, I can still do the same things I did when I was 25. I'm like, I think we're supposed to be here a lot longer. And again, grounding, earthing, the things that he's discovering scientifically are profound. You know, intuitively, I just felt better doing this. So, you know, I, I mean, I would leave LA sometimes. I'd be so inundated from auditions and work, and I'd go out to the Sierras and stay there for a week. And I did this quite often, like at least, you know, once every two months. And whenever I do it, I'd come back and people would always ask me the same questions. Where are you from? You're not from around here. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, no, I live down the block here in Marina Del Rey at the time. And like, no, did you, are you sure you're from around here? You change. And we talked about this the other day, the electromagnetic field, how it raises the frequency. We were talking about negative and positive ions. I mean, these are true things. Uh, it, it's so simple. I love the fact that we can all take our shoes off and reconnect. And that's kind of what I have to say. <laughs> we'll let awesome. Meryl talk. Great. Thank you, Bobby. That's phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah. So, folks, again, if you're listening at home, earthingmovie.com. Share this on Facebook, Earthing Movie, Instagram, Earthing Movie. And now we're going to hear from one of the most exciting people in the documentary, Down to Earth. Marielle, you're a movie star, mm -hmm. uh, but you're so much more. You're, you know, an author. You are one of the most insightful people that I know when it comes to health and well-being and sort of the the greater lineage that we're building here with not just grounding, but all of the things that surround it. Um, tell us the name of your book. Tell us what that was like, writing it with Bobby. <laughs> and tell us about your evolution with grounding. So Bobby and I wrote a book together called Running With Nature. And the last time I was here, I was for a documentary that we had done, well, I had done on my family. Bobby, Bobby and I were both in it, called Running From Crazy some of you may remember. Um, and so anyway, ru running with nature, we, we called it that because we truly believe that nature is our best teacher. You know, it's, it's the way that we connect. Connecting with the earth is how we learn. And um, 
So running from crazy has been a journey for me because it's looking into my family. I have, uh, you know, I have seven suicides in my family. So there's a lot of mental illness, addiction, suicide, all of these different things that have been a, a, a kind of a, a, a driving force behind me figuring out ways to live a life of balance and good health. Um, so when I met Bobby, he opened the doors to me understanding really how nature was such a big part of of life, of balance, of creating good health. And then when I would think about it, I would think about my childhood. So I grew up in Sun Valley, Idaho, which is a beautiful, beautiful place in the mountains. And um, But my home life was really you know, it was tumultuous. There was a lot of addiction. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of, my mother had cancer. My father had heart disease. They could, didn't communicate. And I think back, you know, I think, I, I look at them. My mother never went outside. My m mother never connected with the earth. And, you know, you think in retrospect, it's like, oh my gosh, you, you see all these ties to, to all the different things of, of that disconnection from nature and how it affects everything and it affects the brain but I think of myself being a child and how getting outside was my saving grace it was how I found it, it, it's how I, I literally I grounded and I felt better and I knew this about myself I didn't know why but I spent my entire summers just like you Clint you know I was barefoot and I didn't think about it I used to ride bareback um, with no shoes on and, you know, going through streams on horses, but always connecting, always connecting with the earth. And that was how I stayed sane, literally. And throughout, it wasn't, I kind of disconnected a little bit from that being in the business and I was making movies and I wasn't, I didn't realize um, how important that was. Although every year I would go back to Idaho but I have now I'm on a mission and especially since meeting Bobby and writing our book together and and realizing this connection to nature I mean food exercise water stillness but all of it kind of comes down to a core belief system that it's the earth that's the teacher that's where to meditate, to meditate on the earth. This morning we went out on the in the you know on that red earth and we were getting it on our feet, but we also found a cave, and we walked into this little cave, you know, and we just sat there in stillness, in silence. It's those connections that seem so they seem woo woo, but they're not. These are ancient practices. So when we think about how we have become, you know, so attached to allopathic medicine to the idea that we, we can take a pill and we can fix things. Whereas when you get back to the ancient traditions of connection, and um, it shouldn't be uh, crazy for us to say these things. It should be normal for us. It should be normal for us to be encouraging our children to get outside without their shoes on. You know, instead of saying, oh, you know, put your shoes on because you're going to get, get a get a cold or your feet are going to, or whatever we, we now say instead of them. What I love about the film, too, is when you did the thing about the children. And for me, you know, I have two daughters. They are no longer children, but they are to me. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think about how that was really important to me, and that was just an instinctual thing. I think a, it was a mother thing. Like, I, I sent them out to be, you know, like the kid I was, you know, outside in nature, especially in the summer, and running barefoot, and I didn't see them for several hours. I mean, we can't do that so much in the, in the world we live in today, but we can create a sense that that's important because the kids kids in this movie, you know, we talk about that we talk about it in this film about how, you know, they go they get up in the morning, they got their shoes on, they go to a, a school bus, they get into a school room. They've got horrible lighting over their heads. There there's nothing about the building that's grounded and they're on rubber shoes all day long and then they go out and they do sports in the gym and they are still disconnected because they're in these shoes that don't ground them and connect them to the earth and so my heart breaks a little bit because we wonder why 
children have so many issues with ADHD, ADD, uh, you know, autism. I'm not saying this is a, you know, the end all solution, but it's certainly part of the solution. And Bobby and I's thing in life is we have to get more connected to the earth in order to find balance. We have to do yeah, that. Man's become, you know, this innovative capitalist. He thinks he's smarter than nature. That's an oxymoron. We are nature. How can we be smarter than ourselves? <laughs> we need to figure out how to become part of it and look deeper into it in order to heal. You know, 21st century normal is anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. You know, in the 70s when I grew up, you know, the big thing for teenagers was, you know, pregnancy. That was a big problem. <laughs> you know, now it's 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 suicide and depression. It's insanity. Like, and, and, and and pregnancy has gone down because they're not actually connecting. I at mean, all. They're that, texting. It's not a good thing. But, but, <laughs> but I mean, you know, there's but, but something to be said. Are they're texting. definitely yeah. getting together. And the fact, that, <laughs> the fact that Clint is bringing science to this to validate it so the people who are so all we about don't, it. So let's, it, let's so we don't look, we aren't looked at like right. goofballs that you know <laughs> that are healthy and that, yeah. enjoying life and vibrant and right. Right. absolutely. Can you talk about some of the science that we found out about in the, the Well, yes, yeah. we should, and we have very little time. But I'd love to see if there are some press questions. I can feel that there are yeah. some some burning questions <laughs> out here. So maybe just one or two questions, and then we'll wrap it up with a little science. Does anybody have a, a, a question that they want to ask from the from the press crew here. Where can we get the book? So, this book, Earthing, <laughs> Clint, where can they get it? Uh, it's available at all bookstores and uh, Amazon and uh, you know Goodread, all of the online books. Um, it's just totally available wherever you wherever you get your normal books from. Yep. And There's and running with nature. Running with nature, you can also get on Amazon or. Amazon, <laughs> or Barnes and Noble, Barnes and or, and Noble. or yeah. you know, the yeah, it was, whole, in, it was in Barnes and Noble for a while. It's been a few years since. Yeah. I think we were a little ahead of ourselves ten years ago. <laughs> when we put it together. It's great to be ahead of the curve. Yes. Oh, yeah, but yes, because you please. ask, I'll make sure you get one today. <laughs> oh, there you go. Great. If we are interested in going home and applying this to our lives, what do you recommend? Ninety days or ninety minutes outside on bare feet is going to hurt me to start. I can tell you that. But is there a building up process that you recommend? Yeah, I, I recommend to everybody that. If you have tender feet, you've been wearing shoes for years and years. Um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a challenge to go barefoot. So go out in the backyard. If you have grass, great. If you don't, concrete is fine. Said, take a chair with you. Take your shoes off. Take the book and start reading, so that, <laughs> so that you can experience what you're reading about. And it only takes uh, you know you'll be you'll be rather amazed if you have any uh, chronic pain or chronic inflammation in your body. It, it's a uh, this operates, grounding operates the speed of a light because it's electrical. So it's, um, did I answer your question? Fascinating, yes, yeah. thank you so much. 10 to 15 minutes a day <laughs> can change, can change yeah, your body. That's a good better. start. That'll, yeah. give you, uh, that'll give you a clue that I think I really need to pay attention to this and do more of this. Great. And maybe it, more is better than less. Yes. I, um, I wanted to share something that happened yesterday. It was really interesting to me. I have a friend who I hadn't seen. He lives up in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, you can imagine. Course. You can imagine Portland, Oregon is not the best place to be in February, March. It's raining. And he just, out of the blue, I haven't heard from this guy in five years. And he connected, he texted me and he said, I, I'm, I'm not listening to my family and I won't listen to my therapist. Maybe for some reason, I think I might listen to you. And he said, I'm so depressed. I'm so low. He said, I'm in the rain and the darkness, and it's just freaking me out. So I'm like, oh, wow. You know, my heart started to beat a little bit, and I said, yeah, we and looked, I, I, we looked at it. Said it was going to be sunny. That yeah, day. I looked. I looked at. Yeah, I looked at the weather, and it did say that it was sunny. And I said, here's what I want you to do, and I want you to do it right now. I said, I want you to go outside. I want you to take your shoes off. And I said, and you, you know, you have a miracle. You have sun today. And I said, I just want you to look, look into the light. And he yeah, was like, kind of, and he kept hour, sending me, yeah. Yeah, he and got he, a book. And but he kept sending me these th these videos, and obviously he was still in the house. I was like, I was like, are you outside yet? <laughs> and finally, a couple of hours later, he texts me and he said, I'm crying. And it was just so amazing because. You know, he said, I'm crying. I went from thinking that my life was just shit, basically, to thinking, you know, everything's okay. 
So, ha, like you said, the, the speed of lightning, you know, that's crazy. But he is, you know, and I said, you have to make a commitment to yourself to do this every day. And he was like you. It's like, you know, he wasn't used to it. And he went out on the concrete. And thank God I asked you that last night because I was thinking, oh, you can't ground on concrete. Um, but you can, apparently, if there's a little bit of moisture mo in the air. Humidity yeah. in the air, moisture, yes. Which, uh, yeah. so I just thought that story was so, uh, I just, it, it gives me so much well, I just love that because my whole thing is to help people that have mental health issues to know that they're not alone and that there are solutions that they can do. Yeah. And it's not about taking a pill. Sunlight. Sunlight, yeah. The six doctors, they're free. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to I get to our call to action. I want to get to the end. And don't forget to share this, folks. Earthing Movie on Facebook, Instagram, earthingmovie.com. Clint, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the things that people have experienced today. Yes. Our daughter experiencing chronic inflammation with her croup, Rebecca experiencing a physiological transformation, Bobby uh, you know, jumping <laughs> off of a 30 foot, I mean, right. how many people at any age would jump off <laughs> of anything on the concrete right. and, and break their foot in all sorts of different places and here he is walking around, going on 90 minute hikes. I mean, maybe if you're with Mariel Hemingway, you're doing a 90 minute hike, even if you're broken, <laughs> broken, broken <laughs> nose. Right. And, and, and Mariel having these incredible ongoing life experiences with connecting to the how is it that filling your body with a slight negative charge from the surface of the earth, mm -hmm. how is it that that could have all these different ramifications? Okay. Uh, it's your immune system, our innate immune system. Uh, let's say you have a pathogen or you have a damaged cell in your body. Um, <clears throat> the immune system will send out white blood cell, which is usually a neutrophil, could be any, a host of others and it'll go over and it will encapsulate the uh, damaged cell or the pathogen and it will release what they call reactive oxygen species. And the word reactive means that it's electrically charged, it's hot, it can steal an electron, it can do damage. So what it does is it goes in and rips the electrons away from the pathogen or the damaged cell and destroys it. That's how our immune system works. But before 1960, thereabouts, we were always barefoot or we were wearing in a leather sole shoe. And in these inflammation-related health disorders, if you look on the curve, I mean, here's uh, diabetes, autism, lupus, MS, cancer, all these things are going exponentially like this over the last 60 years. So uh, it's, and, and that is the growth of rubber sole shoes. So anyhow, as we started wearing rubber sole shoes, we cut ourselves off, and we no longer have that negative charge on our bodies. So or let me back up there. So if you are grounded, and your, every cell in your body has more electrons, more free electrons when you have a negative charge. So if there are any of these radicals are remaining after they do their job, then they are automatically grounded or neutralized and, and that's the end of it. If you are wearing shoes and live in a home where you're sleeping on foam beds and your carpets all day long and, and you never touch the earth and you're no longer naturally grounded except when you get in the shower or in a bathtub or things like that, then what happens is when the neutrophils and these, uh, these uh, reactive oxygens, um, if, if they aren't, they, they have to be neutralized in like three or four nanoseconds. If not, they're gonna rip an electron from, let's say a healthy cell, damage it, then the immune system says, okay, there's, you know, sends another neutrophil to clean up that collateral damage, and then it itself feeds more, uh, collateral damage, and so it's kind of like a log on fire, so the body is being oxidized. That's what oxidative, oxidative stress is called, or inflammation. The word inflammation is an abnormal term. Nobody had heard of that word be before 20 years ago. You, you, you never, not until about 204, uh, or 2004. And uh, <clears throat> so it's body on fire. Is, is, so you have the oxidative burst to reduce pathogens, that's normal but for it to go on and, and slowly burn and oxidize the body. That creates chronic inflammation and it does damage. As time goes on, it does damage. It's your fibromyalgia, your lupus, your MS, your arthritis, and so on. So the main thing is like in the first time I learned that with a couple of friends that we can be grounded and the pain subsides, it was mind bending. 
why didn't anybody know about this? <laughs> and nobody knew at that time. So simple too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, but it's logic, it's pure logic because you can't have, that's why we ground everything electrical in your home, your refrigerator, your computer, or anything, you know, it's like this equipment here is all grounded. It has to be grounded for safety and for, to reduce and to dampen noise and just so many things. Um, but in our body, our body is quieter when we're grounded. I mean, the noise in the body, you can't hear it because we're a part of it. But I could go on for a long time. Yeah. The movie's going to fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> the movie does fill in a lot of yes. the blanks. And, uh, and we'll, give you, we'll, give the, we'll give the end of the movie away. We'll tell you what's at the very end. There's a title card, and it says, Ground Our Shoes and Our Schools. Join the movement, yes. earthingmovie.com. Yes. And it puts the Facebook out there, Earthing Movie. So, you know, I think what's really powerful about what you said, Clint, what I take away from it, having studied your work, having been on this journey with Rebecca making this movie, and now with you and Bobby and Marielle, is this is a chain reaction. Yes. You can either begin to steal negative charge mm -hmm. yeah. from your body in a chain reaction, and that chain reaction leads to inflammation, yeah. or you can build the negative charge back into your body, and that quietens the nervous system. Yes and makes the inflammation calm down. Yeah. And that's the basic science behind yeah. what is, some, some, in some way, shape, or form, a very simple technology connecting our bodies Our bodies to are made to heal themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Our bodies very are powerful. designed yeah. to live to be very old. Yeah, your health is the body's most natural state. But if you our body's fighting that inflammation, yes. then we're yeah. not fighting the disease. Yeah, then you com your immune system becomes compromised when your body fills with inflammation. Yeah. Then it can no longer protect you against the, these lifestyle health disorders. Lifestyle health disorders. We have a few of those in America. <laughs> Bobby, last words? Negative ions, man. <laughs> right? You got positive ions, positive charge, they're missing an electron, and guess where they get it from? They take it from you. If you're in the city, you know, cement and buildings all over the place, the positive ions will actually rob your body of electrons. Whereas you go out in nature, talking about grounding, earthing, getting up in your feet, breathing it in, getting it through your eyes, those negative electrons have, uh, uh, or negative ions have an extra electron, and guess what? They give it to you. So you fill yourself with these negative electrons, and that's exactly what we're all talking about. It's pretty simple. Marielle, final words? Uh, watch the movie. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And you can request a screening on earthingmovie.com right now. We'll get that movie to you, and you'll get to watch it before it even gets released. Rebecca, anything final? We come from the earth. You know, we were made to sleep on the earth. We were made to be connected to the earth. It is not natural for us to not be connected to the earth. We intuitively know it feels good to get on the earth, but I didn't know until actually experiencing it that your whole life can transform by getting back in touch with the earth. Your natural biorhythms, your intuition, all of that stuff came flooding back to me, and my life will never be the same. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we are so thankful to be here at the Sedona International Film Festival premiering down to earth. We are we love this festival. We love Sedona. Thank you, Sedona, and thank you to the to the great vortexes and the powers here that got Clint to have this realization. Yes. This is gonna change a lot of people's yeah. lives. Don't forget to share this with all your family and all your friends. Such an honor being here with you all. Yeah. Such a great movie, such a great film festival. <laughs> thank you. Have a great day. Yeah.